Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. We'll make four questions. Oh, okay. four. Questions. Good. Thank no. you. But, uh, no, but remember, remember, we will meet again this afternoon, and it will be uh, this afternoon on Idlib again. So I would strongly suggest that we focus on, instead, the curtain raiser, I would call it, uh, the, on what is in on the book regarding the political process. Everything is linked, as you know, and, uh, and therefore it is important that we don't forget what is going to happen next week. So last week we did discuss Idlib, as you know, and uh, our serious concerns, they continue as to be there. We'll be back with Jan Egeland this afternoon, and you will have ample opportunity of asking questions both to him and to myself and for us to express further uh, the comments. Let me now focus on the curtain raiser on the political process. We are in front of a quite a important, in my opinion, few weeks of consultations towards what we hope potentially reviving or giving a chance to reviving a credible political process in Syria. Let me now be clear what we mean by that. Well, our goal is consistent with 2254, people, some people think we have forgotten, no, it's there, and the Sochi final statement is to facilitate the establishment of a inclusive, Syrian-led, Syrian-owned constitutional committee. As you know, 2254 includes many other issues, but we have reached a point due to many circumstances and real politics that the Constitution Committee can be and should be now the entry point for what we call a credible political process, as long as the Constitution Committee is credible as well. Now, my team and I have been very active in seeking a consensus on how to put in place such a crucial building block of the political process. With the buy-in, that's the aim, of the government of Syria, the opposition, and a wide range of Syrians while fully respecting, you know it very well, we'll say it until we are blue in our face because it's constant, the sovereignty, unity, territorial integrity, and independence of Syria. My senior colleagues have been, just in the last few weeks and days, actually currently even, in Turkey, Iran, and Russia to ensure the, ensure the necessary preparations for our next meeting on the Constitutional Committee with the Sochi guarantors. This is why we have invited on the 10th and 11th September senior officials from Russia, Turkey, and Iran to meet with me here in Geneva. This builds on earlier consultations in Geneva in June and in Sochi, but on the Geneva format, because they were chaired by myself, late July. I cannot, and I will not at this stage, forecast today how far we will be progressing on 10 and 11 September. But I do can state the following. It is going to be quite an important moment of truth. Second, the third list of government, opposition, and the third list, as we call it, have been shared and are very clearly on the table for the meeting on the 10th and 11th. They are there. They have been there for a while. So are some important options on how to help the Syrians' sides to organize the work of the Constitutional Committee. On the 14th of September, which means very few days afterwards, I've invited the senior uh, the representative and special envoys of the so-called small group here to Geneva, USA, France, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Germany, UK, Egypt, not in alphabetical order, neither in importance order, just as they came to my mind now, to brief them and discuss the issue that we will be discussing, a constitution committee, as it went on the 10th and 11th. I did the same in June, as you remember, in Geneva. I'm also engaging the European Union, which is very keen in supporting our efforts, 
and in the Arab League on the political process. On 20th of September, so you have to look at that date, and I'm looking at that date very much, there will be a Security Council meeting. And that is just around, as you know, the general debate at the General Assembly. It will be, I guess, most likely open, and it will, that's up to them to decide, and chaired by the United States of America. On that occasion, I do plan to bring the latest information and take stock of where we are. So this is basically the roadmap we are having in front of us regarding how to revitalize before the 20th of September the Constitutional Committee road, which is at the moment the best road we can see in front of us for establishing some movement on the political process. I will stop there because obviously I would like to be able to tell you more on the 11th when we will be able to see where we are and what has been happening. So, Thank you. So we'll take four questions. And again, as Mr. de Missouri has explained, please limit yourself to the political issue. Laurent, Swiss uh, News Agency. Yes. Good to see you again. Same here. Uh, that will be a connection between Idlib and the political situation, because uh, among the countries that you mentioned, most of them uh, increase the tension and the rhetorics around Idlib. Do you fear that there might be consequences on the sequence that you just announced? And uh, could this consultation be either postponed or, or I mean, length, l last more than a few days? And uh, that's the perspective of a constitutional com committee might be postponed further? During the many years we have been now working together, you have seen that there is always something happening in Syria that could be used as an excuse or justify, according to some, a delay or postponement or any type of initiative. We are determined to maintain the dates of the 10th and 11th and of the 14th because we believe that whatever, and we hope, and we will talk about it this afternoon, nothing will be dramatically happening regarding Idlib, that's our hope and wish. We still believe that uh, the political process should not be hostage of anything, otherwise there will always be a reason or an excuse used by anyone to postpone everything else. So that is my line on that. Jimmy. Where are you? Behind this that, camera. Um, sorry. Normally, I, I'm used to see you there. there. Yeah. Yeah. All over. Sir, thank you. Um, I wanted to just ask you, um, if I could, about the opposition, particularly with how you see their role. We have not seen them here in Geneva for many months. How are they possibly going to be involved in this? Or are they being locked out of the process? And I'm sorry to say, but I need to ask you about Idlib. We had a tweet from President Trump today, um, essentially warning that it would be a mistake if there are, um, it is an incursion by uh, the Syrian government forces. Do you agree with what he's saying? Thank you. Um, regarding the second point, which I'm more than glad to address this afternoon, please ask it this afternoon, because I'm ready for addressing it, because it was an important message, and no one should uh, ed, uh, avoid to ed, take notice of it. So I will be talking about this afternoon, so raise it again, please. Regarding the first one, which is more pertinent to the political process, yes, the opposition is very much included, there is a list called the list of the opposition, which has been prepared with great care, a lot of internal negotiations facilitated by countries also who support the opposition. And uh, I am, I'm convinced that if we are going through what I hope will be a useful meeting on the 10th and 11th, we'll be having, as we hope, the beginning of discussions among the Syrians, this is supposed to be done by the Syrians, we are facilitating, supporting, and the opposition list is there. Um, yes, Tom uh, and then Lisa. Tom Miles from Reuters, good afternoon. Um, this process now seems to be a shadow of its former self, and although you say, you know, we haven't stopped, I mean, frankly, it is beginning to look like a, a process to just tick the boxes of 2254 rather than to make actual, uh, any actual real change 
in the governance of Syria. So, you know, how realistic do you think it is that we're going to see any real difference in Syrian uh, politics in three or five years' time? And also, can you give us any idea about um, time frames for this uh, constitutional committee? Is it going to be in place by the end of the year, do you think? Uh, is it going to, you know, do its job within a certain time frame, or is it just open-ended? Thanks very much. Tom, I must say that uh, you have a point, and uh, you know very well we went through this in the past. The resolution 2254 is a very large and comprehensive resolution. It did take place some time ago when many things had uh, not changed, and uh, we had uh, to take that into account, all of us, including those who were part of drafting the resolution 2254. So we are using 2254 as a broad and strong, in my opinion, guideline. But now, look at this, Tom. Constitutional committee, a reform of this current constitution or a new constitution, if properly done through an inclusive process, does affect and touch many of the aspects of any country or any governance, including elections. So while I do recognize we were talking about that large type of a series of initiatives, and you two things that you are familiar with, facts on the ground, changes, attitudes, and even political changes, there is still one common ground that including the Sochi facilitators or guarantors agree on, is Constitutional Committee. Now, that's why I'm saying it's going to be a moment of truth. If the Constitutional Committee does not take off, and if the Constitutional Committee becomes a long, winding, ongoing, just process about the process, then I would agree with you. But give it a chance. I feel that due to other things as well, it is important. Shall I give you one example? Well, as you know, there is a lot of discussions about refugees these days, and, and rightly so. Well, my father was a political refugee himself. That's why I'm, I was born in Sweden. Hmm? He was not in favor of the fascist period in Italy. Well, I remember him telling me what I'm hearing from many Syrians. Well, we are looking, of course, for a house, for a hospital, for a road, and so on, a job. But above all, we need to have in front of us a political horizon. So even in the case of the issue of refugees, a political horizon which could and should perhaps come through a credible constitutional reform becomes important. Lisa, Voice of America, could you please move a little bit? The photographer. Yeah, right, I can't see you. Hi. Yeah. Please. Well, I can't see you. I, okay. Yeah. Hi. Okay, good. I can see you now. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I have a, a couple of very, sh very short questions, and that is, first, uh, what is the composition of the committee in terms of how many people? Because I think there was some controversy regarding the uh, Syrian competition that, uh, a composition I think you thought that perhaps too many people were uh, wanted to get involved in this situation. So have you limited the numbers? Uh, will the talks be face to face or will it be shuttle diplomacy? I think it might be important to see whether the uh, opposition and the Syrians actually want to talk to each other or if they're still very much apart. And will women be involved in this? Women who are the peacemakers and not actually fighting or are they going to be sidelined as usual? Thank you. So there were three, actually. Um, don't worry. Uh, um, first of all, uh, I can be pretty short on numbers. I'm not going to elaborate today, here, publicly, where we are on the numbers, because that's exactly one of the subjects that will be discussed on 10th and 11th. As you know, there have been two categories of number, 150 or 45. Well, all that is part of the discussion. Now, regarding face-to-face, -face, if you are referring to the countries who are going and expected to facilitate this type of uh, process, then, as you can see, I have to have still two separate meetings. 
if you talk about countries. One is with the, uh, the Sochi guarantors, and the other one with the small group. Um, our aim, and I know it's the aim of other countries like France, to uh, be able to make sure that there is a close linkage between the two groups, who are both influential and important for the future, rehabilitation, for instance, of Syria, or a political process, well, it's not yet there, otherwise we will not meet them separately. And that's what the UN role is supposed to be, bridging when people can't talk totally together in a setup of a meeting. Now, if you were talking about the face-to-face -face discussion of what we call the Constitutional Committee membership, in other words, the Syrians, well, I will be able to elaborate further when we actually convene it. On women, you know where I stand. I, no, I stand very strongly on that. And in fact, uh, I'm, expected, I'm expecting to face difficulties when I will be insisting, as I plan to, that the proper representation of women should be part of the Constitution Committee. And I count on your support, actually, to help me in making sure that when I will be receiving objections on that, you will be able to help me to say why should not women be equally qualified as men and therefore be substantially part of the Constitution Committee. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. And uh, this is only arrivederci because we will see you here again at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. We'll be Minister. with Jan Egeland and myself, so we will be able to elaborate both technically and politically because, as you know, the perfect storm is not caused by wind but by politics and human beings, so we need to look at it both politically and logistically. Thank you.